Hey Garden Nerds, it's National Kale Day, and I'm Christy Wilhelmy, and we're trying this YouTube live stream again because it kept hanging up for some reason on a still shot. So hopefully this is working. We're trying a different Wi-Fi uh, router, and maybe this will be better. So I'm going to start all over, and hopefully <laughs> you didn't hear this first part. Uh, I want to start by saying kale is awesome. I love kale. Oh, kale, yeah, right? And the second of all, uh, there's some a few tidbits for why to grow kale. Uh, primarily because it's really good for you. So first of all, kale has uh, only 33 calories per cup. It is really high in fiber uh, and vitamins A, K, and C. And it's um, also it has 45 different compounds that have been known to prevent cancer. And I have to look at my notes. And it's also anti-inflammatory. So for everyone doing, you know, fighting with um, inflam inflammation and inflammatory related autoimmune disorders, kale is great for that. Um, it also balances blood sugar, which is very cool. So if you want to find out more details like that, go to nationalkaleday.org. And with that, we're going to jump into growing kale. So I have some of my favorites. First of all, I want you to look down here. These are my babies. They're under grow lights. And this is my kale tray. There are about 12 different varieties growing here. Right now, these are just sprouted, and some of them have a couple of true leaves coming out. Uh, by the way, you know, cotyledons are the first leaves that appear. These are the heart-shaped leaves here. But then the second set of leaves that come out, these guys, are the true leaves. So once you get a set of true leaves, they're ready to transplant into four inch pots. So we're about to move these up to four inch pots. Uh, and then after about another three to four weeks, we'll plant them out into the garden. So that's what you can do. If you don't want to buy stuff from the nursery, which you, you can do, but it's so much more interesting to grow your own. These seeds are awesome. So I want to say, first of all, you're used to th probably seeing three types of kale available in the markets and at the nursery. The first is a curly kale, which a lot of times you'll see as a garnish underneath the thing that you're eating. The second thing is red Russian kale, which has a nice red stem uh, down the middle and some purple hue to the leaves. And the most popular is probably Lachinato or dinosaur kale, which is also known as Tuscan kale. And um, that's that deep green long stalk that's really beautiful. Um, but there are others which you might not be able to find in the store. For example, Truncuda Beida, it's a uh, Portuguese kale that is really like a collard green. I've seen it kind of registered on catalogs as a collard, but it's, I plant it right next to my kales. Um, another one that's fantastic and beautiful is is that upside down? No. <laughs> Scarlet kale. It's fully purple. Gorgeous. What's not to love about that? Uh, Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company carries Scarlet kale. And my favorite kale is True Siberian, which is a fantastic loose kale that is less tough than some of the others. So I like this a lot for if you're planning on eating it raw, it really breaks down quickly in uh, an acid, which by the way, don't eat raw kale unless you mix it with an acid, either lemon juice or lime juice or apple cider vinegar or some kind of vinegar, um, because that breaks down the acids that make it impossible to digest. So tip of the day right there. All right. Other kales that I really like, uh, Vate's Blue Curly Kale grows really well. It's a traditional curly kale. Beautiful. Uh, I also love Curly Roja, which is a red, purple curly kale. Very nice kale. And then my three new favorites, Fizz, which is this crazy, I, you know, it looks like, um, like a frizzy lettuce or a, or an, a frizzy endive that's just kind of crazy and fun to grow. And Dazzling Blue Kale, which is a fantastic Lachinato type kale that has um, a, purple, a purple stem and a hue that's all purple throughout. Uh, and then there's Cyber frill, cyber frill, which is a, a, like a Siberian kale, but it's a little frillier. It's got little torn jaggedy edges and that's fun. All right. So you've seen how we start our seeds for, for kale. Um, and then we're going to transplant them up to four inch pots, give them a little more time under the lights. Then it'll be time to transplant them outside. So let's go out and I'll show you what to do then. Oh, the knees. Come on. Let's go. All right, so 
this is going to be my kale bed. And right now, I've prepped it. Now, I have a whole uh, video on garden, uh, sorry, bed prep for fall or spring. So the first thing you do is pull all your old crops, and then I put down about an inch of compost that we harvested from our compost bins right over there. And then I'm going to wait to put the irrigation back in place. This is, by the way, quarter inch tubing with six inch emitters. It's got holes every six inches. And I'm going to plant the kale first and then run the uh, irrigation through. And once you do that, you're good to go. Um, I like to add a little bit of extra compost and worm castings to the bed to help fight off aphids, which are very popular with, uh, with kale plants. And then the main thing we're trying to do is fight off um, cabbage worms and cabbage moths. So cabbage moths, you may know as those little white butterflies that fly around. There's actually one right over there behind the camera. We're not going to show you, but they're little white butterflies, usually with a little black diamond on their wings. And they lay their eggs on the undersides of kale and other brassicas. So if you have a patch of broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kohlrabi, Brussels sprouts, and kale, they lay their eggs on the undersides and they look like a tiny little chartreuse grain of rice, tiny, tiny, tiny grain of rice. And so what we use to prevent them from landing, which keeps them from laying their eggs on your stuff, is this, this is called floating row cover. Now this is a light summer weight fabric. It's reusable for years and years and years. And you cut it to size and basically I'll put my plants in and I will drape this doo -doo -doo, over the bed and then use these these U-pins, look like giant hairpins, to secure the corners all the way around. And I usually cut the fabric about a foot longer on either side to allow for the plants to get taller. And they'll just push the fabric up until they're outgrowing the whole thing and then I take it off. And at that point, you can uh, just hand inspect by turning the leaves over and uh, rubbing your thumbs over the leaves to dislodge any eggs that have settled on there because those eggs hatch and then they turn into green worms and then they start eating all of your stuff, which is really not fun. Nobody wants to eat stuff. Uh, I mean, no one wants to eat kale that has bugs all over it, right? So I know that this floating row cover isn't the most attractive thing in the world, however, it is absolutely going to save your kale plants and your other brassicas from being infested with, um, with cabbage worms. So uh, I think a little unattractiveness is okay in the garden if the result is a bountiful harvest, don't you? So uh, when you're growing, as you're growing throughout the season, uh, I inspect my plants every couple of days for cabbage worms and I also love to uh, plant my stuff and then feed them with kelp emulsion. So I'll do a, a, kelp, a liquid kelp uh, watering after I've planted everything and that helps uh, ease transplant shock and get them what they need to start growing deep, strong roots. And um, this kale that we'll put out sort of in, in the next couple of weeks, well, probably at the end of October, uh, we will this will last until February. So we'll grow through the winter with this. If you live in a place that gets snow, uh, kale actually does better in a frost. It gets sweeter in a frost. So you can use a, a thicker insulating blanket. There are many different weights available for this kind of cover. The, um, this is a summer weight. There's an all purpose and there's a winter weight fabric that insulates the whole thing. And of course, if you're growing these in a cold frame, you're, you're even better off um, or, an, or in a greenhouse. Um, so it's possible to grow kale through the winter, even if you get snow, and the, the product actually uh, increases in flavor, or improves in flavor with frost. Now, I wanna show you some other kind of kale that I didn't talk about. It's a perennial kale, and I've, I've got several videos on perennial kale, and even how to propagate uh, tree kale or tree collards, and that's right behind me right here, this monster. I love this monster. This is my favorite kale because even in the summer, when the other kales won't grow because it's too hot here where I live, I can harvest from this plant. Now, this, this is a, you'll notice there's a lot of trellising required with this because it'll just drag on the ground if you don't. Like this one doesn't have a trellis here. It's uh, doing its own thing, but um, they're propagated from cuttings and I have a YouTube video on how to do that if you want to see. And uh, it's, it's something that lasts <clears throat> for about 
four or five years before you need to chop it and cut it and you know do another another cutting. This one back here is the original plant, which I got probably in uh, I think it was 2012, so it's pretty old. And I've chopped it down at least twice. It was 10 feet tall, and I cut it, and then I cut it again. And it just keeps coming back. So it needs much less water than um, annual kales do. <clears throat> and it keeps producing. And I have found that it's fairly resistant to cabbage worms. So it's a great thing to have if you want to dedicate some space in your garden for perennial kale. It's, uh, it's wonderful. And I also feed the chickens with this. So if any of them have a little bit of powdery mildew on them, I'll break them off, give them to the chickens. They're happy to devour it. So, um, so that's one of my favorite things about kale right there. <laughs> so I encourage you to grow kale this fall, uh, wherever you live. It's uh, grow something more than just the three varieties that you find at the nursery. Branch out, try something new and enjoy the health benefits of kale. Uh, gonna sign off right now. I hope you all enjoyed this talk and um, happy National Kale Day and happy garden.